which of the following oxo acids of sulfur has oo that is peroxy linkage students in this question we are given with four oxo acids of sulfur that is h2so5 h2s2o4 h2s2o7 or h2s2o3 and we have to identify that in which of the given oxo acid there exist a peroxy linkage and for that we have to draw the structures of all the given oxo acids and then we'll be able to figure out that which particular oxo acid has peroxy linkage so let's see here you can see the structures of all the oxo acids given in the question number 1 h2so5 this is known as carose acid or per oxo monosulfuric acid you can clearly see that this oxo acid has peroxy linkage moving to next h2s2o4 which is known as dithionous acid you can clearly see that there is no peroxy linkage moving to the next option h2s2o7 which is known as oleum you can clearly see that there is no peroxy linkage moving to the last option h2s2o3 which is known as thiosulfuric acid here also you can clearly see that there is no peroxy linkage that means the only oxo acid among the given options which has peroxy linkage is h2so5 which is carose acid that means the correct answer is option number a moving to the next question most effective ion for the coagulation of as2s3 sol is aluminium ion that is al3 plus mg2 plus cl minus or so42 minus student we know that as2 S3 is a negatively charged sol and for this we need to know that it can be easily coagulated by cation having highest charge that means aluminium ion will be most effective for the coagulation of AS2S3 that is a negatively charged sol moving to the next question lactose on hydrolysis gives option A alpha d glucose and alpha d fructose option b beta d glucose and beta d galactose option c beta d glucose and beta d glucose and the last option is alpha d glucose and beta d galactose student for this question we need to understand the structure of lactose we can clearly see that lactose is composed of beta d galactose and beta d glucose that means on hydrolysis lactose gives beta d galactose and beta d glucose so the correct answer is option number b moving to the next question find out the solubility of magnesium hydroxide in 0.1 molar naoh we are given with the solubility product of magnesium hydroxide which is 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 11 the options are 3.24 into 10 raised to the power minus 10 molar the next option is 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 molar the next option is 3.24 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 molar and the last option is 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 10 molar student here we are given with 0.1 molar naoh solution and we know that naoh completely dissociates into na plus ion and oh minus ion that means the concentration of na ion will be 0.1 molar and here also the concentration of hydroxide ion will be 0.1 molar since we are given with magnesium hydroxide which dissociates into magnesium ion and hydroxide ion i am assuming the solubility of magnesium hydroxide be s a mole per liter so this will be s and this will be 2s plus 0.1 this 0.1 came from naoh now student we know that ksp of magnesium hydroxide will be the concentration of magnesium ion multiplied by the concentration of hydroxide ion raised to the power 2 since the value of the concentration of magnesium ion will be s mole per liter and here it will be 0.1 raised to the power 2 since the value of 2s plus 0.1 is approximately equal to plus 1 because the value of s is very very smaller than 0.1 so i'm taking 2s plus 0.1 as 0.1 
Let's put the value of Ksp in the given equation. The value of Ksp is 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 11. Now the value of S will be 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 11. 0 0.01 which is equal to 1.8 into 10 raised to the power minus 9 molar. That means the correct answer is option number B. Moving to the next question, the incorrect option for free expansion of an ideal gas under isothermal condition is, the options are delta H equals to 0, delta S equal to 0, delta T equal to 0 and the last is W equal to 0. Let us start this question students. Students, since we are given with isothermal free expansion. And we know that for isothermal delta T equal to 0, that means delta U is also equal to 0 since delta U is a function of temperature. Now let us talk about work done, W is equal to minus P external delta V. Since for free expansion P external is equal to 0, that means work done will also be 0. Now let us talk about delta H, delta H is equal to n c p delta t since delta t equal to 0 that means delta h is equal to 0 the only thermodynamic property which is not equal to 0 among the given options is entropy since for expansion entropy increases that means the correct answer for this question is option number b delta s is not equal to 0 for free expansion of ideal gas under isothermal conditions moving to the next question 